The cabin where the Unabomber plotted his deadly attacks is no longer in Montana. So what happened to it after his arrest? In the woods near Lincoln, Montana, a small structure housed the subject of one of the FBI's most worked manhunts in their history. Theodore Ted Kaczynski, known as the Unabomber, built the cabin in 1971. He lived there until his arrest by federal authorities in 1996, striving for self-sufficiency and living off the grid. He subsisted on wild game for more than two decades, according to the Washington Post. Porcupines, rabbits, and squirrels were his mainstay, cooked on an outdoor fire. Inside, shelves of books about survival, nutrition, and world languages filled the cabin. The cabin's inhabitants seemed a solitary man who removed himself from society and survived on what the land provided, but the reality was much more sinister. Between 1978 and 1995, Kaczynski constructed explosive devices and mailed them to targets, mainly universities and airlines. His 16 bombings injured more than two dozen people and killed three in separate mail bombings. The cabin on Humbug Contour Road was not only a refuge for a man who rejected modern society, but also the headquarters of a one-man war against society. Those who visit Kaczynski's former property near the Scapegoat Wilderness area in west-central Montana will find remnants of his storage lean-to, but little else to indicate his 25-year residence. The cabin was moved to a different location and is open to the public today. In 2006, a court ordered that all of Kaczynski's possessions be auctioned, with the proceeds divided among his many victims. The New York Times reported that the auction included the cabin that Kaczynski built. The sale yielded more than $200,000. The museum purchased the cabin, moved it on a semi-truck, and displayed it publicly. This Washington, D.C.-based museum reassembled the dwelling inside its building, adding an anchor to its impressive collection of artifacts. Everyone who comes here remembers the Unabomber cabin, and we have a lot of people coming in wanting to see it. Kaczynski lived in the rustic 10 by 12 foot cabin without running water or electricity. He had a cutaway spot on the floor for when nature called. A wood stove heated the one room structure, which had a gabled roof and a loft space. In a video shown at the museum, a former FBI agent described the cabin's condition when it was raided and searched, noting the smell and the filth. FBI photos showed books shoved into shelves along its walls. Grocery items, survival gear, debris, and bomb-making supplies littered the cabin, along with two manual typewriters. A greasy outline of Kaczynski's body on one wall near a cot showed where he had slept. All the body oils um, had gotten into the wood over time. Matt Flanders, producer of the biopic Ted K, told NBC Montana that his crew built an exact replica of the cabin for the film. Same stove, shelves were the same. Everything inside the cabin was based on FBI evidence photos. Having worked in that for weeks and weeks and weeks and how small that is, I can't imagine someone living in it for 20 years. The museum closed its doors at the end of 2019 due to financial difficulties. John Hopkins University bought it for nearly $400 million. In 2020, the FBI took possession of Kaczynski's cabin and installed it at their Washington, D.C. headquarters. A time-lapse video shows the careful process of putting the structure back together. The Unabomber's cabin is now part of the FBI experience. This self-guided tour takes visitors through many of the Bureau's most notorious cases. The FBI experience is open to the public, but getting into the Bureau's headquarters requires some steps. You must schedule your visit in advance, between four weeks and five months before your arrival. Also, you must schedule the tour through your congressperson by email. After the Bureau approves your request, you'll receive emails confirming your visit date and time and security clearance. On June 10, 2023, Kaczynski died by suicide in his prison cell at Federal Medical Center in Butner, North Carolina, where he was treated for terminal cancer. He was 81.